Sure. Um, so I'll call the meeting to order and share that um, this meeting is taking place by Zoom and it is being recorded. Um, we have, do we have a quorum? We do, we have eight. Great. Um, so uh, if you haven't taken a look at our meeting norms for a while, I would encourage you to do so. And um, well, it looks like we have some new, new folks. Should we do some intros? Yes. Um, maybe we can go around and share our names. And if you feel comfortable sharing pronouns, share those. Um, and something, some positive art experience you've had in the last year. Can I start? start? Please I'll go. Start. Hello, everyone. My name is Joella Tarbun. I'm also known as Jada. And I've been on uh, this board. It'll be a year this year, right? And it's been fantastic. My, my creative art form is a performance artist. And so I uh, haven't done anything since uh, COVID. So I'm looking forward to get us back. Northampton. I pass it to you. To who, Jada? You're the only person I can see. So you, Danielle. All right. Um, my name is Danielle Amadeo. I use she, her pronouns. I've lost count of how long I've been on the Arts Council. It hasn't been that long, but it was before COVID. So it, I don't know <laughs> how many years, <laughs> it feels like 10. Um, and an art experience I've had recently that I enjoyed. I came up with this prompt. I should have had a good answer ready. Um, hmm. I don't know, y'all. Might have to loop back to me. I'm a little bit brain dead. I'll I'll think of it and put it in the chat. Um, so I'll pass it to Garrett. Hi, my name is Garrett. Uh, I've been on the Arts Council for less than a year. I don't I don't know how long it's been. Maybe I don't know since last fall or something. Something like that. I I don't remember. Anyway, um, I use he him his pronouns um and a positive art experience i had recently as i'm a hobby woodworker on the side my my like arts discipline is in film production and media production but i'm a hobby woodworker and i just made a sign for my uncle for christmas for his uh alpaca farm so i made a big wooden sign for him it's the first time i've ever done something like that so it was uh really gratifying to spend a lot of time to do something I haven't done before in a, in a physical form and then have it hopefully last a long time. Uh, with that, I'll hand it off to Kay. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Kay. Uh, I use they, them pronouns and I have uh, been on the Arts Council for a couple of months, I think. That sounds right. Um, art experience in the last year. Um, well, in August, I went to uh, the Omega Mart um, uh, performance piece in Las Vegas, which was this really crazy, like, psychedelic grocery store experience where you got to, like, go behind the shelves and look at all this weird stuff. So that that was pretty cool. That was probably the highlight of the, uh, the year for me. And it was also the first travel I had post-COVID. So that was pretty great. And um, I'll pass it to my... Hello, my name is Mai, my pronouns are they, them. I've been on the Arts Council for a little over a year now. Um, and in 2022, I finally got um, an art studio space, a shared space, but in Eastworks. So I'm very happy to be working among some other really cool folks there. Um, I will pass it to Eamon. Hi, I'm Eamon. Um, I've been on the Art Council for, I think, about uh, almost four years. Um, and a recent art experience I've had is uh, live concerts down in uh, Springfield, which were, was really great. Um, and uh, music, folks from uh, that community down there. 
Um, I will give it to uh, uh, Pete. Hi, my name is my name is Pete Olson. I uh, go by he him pronouns. I have uh, been a long time uh, Northampton resident, and I joined the council just a few months ago. Uh, positive experience. I recently started doing some pottery with uh, another person in town, so we're looking to do some more of that. And they set up their studio. Uh, another, we just a friend of mine who's an artist just recently moved into Northampton, so I think that's a cool thing. And I'll pass it to. Let's see who hasn't gone. Kay, Kay, did you go? Alona, Elio, <laughs> our new member, who oh, just hey. got, who just got appointed. Okay, great. Well, we can pass it to Elio. Hey, um, it's, a, it's Aliona. Uh, if it's hard Aliona. to pronounce for someone, you can call me Al. Aliona is a Russian version of name Elena. Um, oh. But yeah, I can send you guys pronunciation. Uh, I will send it a link into a chat how to pronounce it if anybody cares to do it properly. I would really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I recently got appointed and now I'm a part um uh, of the art council, which is very exciting. This is my first meeting where I'm officially a part of uh, a team. Uh, and um, I focus on um, installation art, uh, immersive experiences. And there's a couple, there's several highlights for art uh, last year for me. I think uh, the one that really Um, I can't hear you, Aliana. I'm not sure if there's uh, audio. We seem to have gone out. How about now, guys? Yeah, great. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think the like, I think Brad and Poppet experience the beginning of the summer was very inspiring, especially going through their museum and seeing all the art installation that they use like since 60s uh, to uh, to talk about social agenda and you know uh, protesting wars and uh, other things that's yeah I think that's what was the most inspiring also them using uh, mostly recycled materials and uh, Amazon boxes and their performance was really cool to see so yeah very cool uh, did everybody go? Brian. Hi, I'm Brian. Uh, I go by he, him pronouns. Uh, I recently had a good experience. I went to Hut at 33 Holly Street. It's um, uh, a curated art experience. It has spoken word, dance, and music, and one artist, individual artist from each. And I really had a really engaging experience with the dance. Uh, it was like an immersive um, crowd uh, um, participation, which I thought was cool. I've never seen a dance performance like that. So that was my my uh, most recent um, enjoyable experience as an audience member, because it's hard. A lot of times it's I don't have time to be an audience member. I'm usually helping um, produce. Jada, did you figure out your uh, Technical difficulty. Jada, can you hear us? I don't know. Jada, can you hear us? I, I, I can. Yes. Us. Okay. Can you see us I and hear see us? I can for a minute, but I, 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 get, I can see you too. Okay. Good. Let me make sure that we have. Uh, a quorum, that's all. Um, okay, so if you want a link to the, the group meeting norms, uh, I'm going to put that into the. All in favor of these minutes. Did we forget Doris? Doris is not on the council. I believe she's here 
for as as a member of the public. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Sorry about that. <laughs> Jada, are you on another meeting right now too? All right, uh, so I just shared the link to our group meeting norm. Um, we can start with the first agenda item. Well, I'm going to read public comment first. OK, please do. Thank you. Um, so we received this email from Doris Madsen this afternoon and asked us to read um, it at the start of the meeting. And it reads, I would like to know if you plan to resume working on the apology to the many people involved with NAC 2021 biennial, which was canceled. If so, when and in what format? Thank you for your time and efforts, Doris. Um, so that is now on the record. And we can open up if anyone wants to make public comment live. Okay, so let's hop into our first agenda item which, well, we looked at our group meeting norms and we're gonna take a look at the um, poet laureate and youth poet laureate. So the poet laureate, we have no updates. Jesse and I are on that subcommittee and we're working with that. Um, I think we're still looking at, looking for a committee, subcommittee members to help us uh, choose the next poet laureate. There's a short list we've been working on. Um, and then we're asking, you know, uh, poetry professors and other um, persons in the poetry community to give us their short lists of people who could be on the subcommittee as well as um, poets who they think would be a good fit for the Northampton Poet Laureate. Uh, uh, Jesse was unable to, to attend tonight. He's out of town. So that's all we have for that. Um, Does the Poet Laureate have to live in Northampton? No. Um, I'm not sure if this is on your guys' radar, but Voices from Inside is like this organization that teaches creative writing classes in prisons and then creates opportunities for women to perform once they're out. And for mm -hmm. a while, they produced poetry chat books. So there are mm -hmm. a lot of women who have published poetry that are based in um, Springfield, Greenfield, Chicopee. Um, mm -hmm. Chesterfield that are part of this organization that have published and I'm not sure like if they would be a good fit for being potential judges or if we have a stipend for our judges. Is there, a, there uh, there's no stipend for our judges. Okay. Uh, it's a subcommittee. It's not a, a cure. It's not, it's just, uh, it's not similar to like a, the biennial where we offer stipends for the judges. It's a speak the poetry com community coming together. Okay. Uh, to choose, but there is a stipend for the poet laureate, um, which is a thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, but if there's anybody in that community that's like an editor or an administrator, uh, or has been involved in the chat books consistently, uh, if you could put me or Jesse, probably Jesse, I'm trying to have Jesse to the lead on this, uh, put Jesse in touch with them, and uh, we can reach out from there. Uh, and, but if the council wants to create, uh, there's no public monies that are set aside to offer a stipend for anybody who's on the, the subcommittee. Because um, we're not looking at poetry, there's, it's mostly uh, a, a discussion based um, subcommittee. Okay, thank you. I think Garrett is working on the Youth Poet Laureate. And I don't know if you have any updates, Garrett? Uh, not really much to share. I've done a lot of, uh, a bit of research, not a lot of research, but I've done some research and um, I have some avenues I'm trying to explore. Um, I guess I could use some guidance on like sort of the scope and the goal of what I'm, uh, what I'm accomplishing here. So maybe because the holidays are over, I can find some time and maybe Brian and I can have a tea mm -hmm. or a coffee and discuss this sometime in the next couple of weeks. And, Hopefully, I can make some more meaningful progress. Uh, to to help with the scope, um, this is a fair. This is a very new um, appointment that was created two years ago, uh, and the initial poet laureate, youth poet laureate, was uh, selected from Northampton High School. 
Um, so that narrows your scope down. Uh, I don't know if we want to, you know, look also at Smith Locational or, you know, even JFK. Uh, but those are things that the Poet Laureate, the Youth Poet Laureate subcommittee can discuss and, and bring into the council to, to vote and ratify. Okay. Um, am, am I sort am I expected to collect some other subcommittee members? Is that part of the, the job? Uh, yeah. Why don't you just, you know, uh, outside the meeting, reach out to me and you and I can get together and, and come up yeah. with a, a more, uh, a solid plan of action. Cool. Great. Thanks. Does okay. anyone else who's on the call want to support either the Poet Laureate or a Youth Poet Laureate work? If you're interested, would you unmute or <laughs> raise a hand or put a flag in the chat? It does sound like we need some support. On what do you mean support? I mean, I, I'm part of this group and I support it. But what do you mean want to support? Please tell me, let them stay at our house. What, what do you mean? No. So I think like meet with Garrett to identify the goals of what the Youth Poet Laureate program will look like. Do you outreach to local schools and um, professors of English and writing to get nominations, uh, create a form that will be used to nominate people? or to select people, create some criteria for selecting people, really kind of produce that process with Garrett and Brian. And then for the adult poet laureate, um, work with Brian and Jesse on that. In the same, in similar vein. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next agenda item. <laughs> so we have LCC fiscal 23 updates. Is that you, Brian? Yep. So we sent out uh, the denial letters of the people that we did not fund on de December 15th. Um, and that's inputting in through the smart simple system through the MCC and that automatically gets generated uh, and then uh, we waited the 15 day reconsideration period. I uh, was not contacted by the MCC for anybody to get reconsidered. And then I sent a, an email directly from our Arts Council account. Um, and it also gets sent from the MCC and uh, notifying the award uh, awardees. Um, and now right now I'm waiting to get their um, grant agreement signed and returned as long as a w9 form so then i can process um with the city of northampton uh the payments for this particular group of awardees um i'm planning to send a press release out um in conjunction with the mayor's office uh on um, january 17th um and then doing like a press junket of like who we've ordered the the money to so those are all the updates does anybody have any questions? Okay. Let's move on. Danielle, what do we have for new business? So we had left off um, a plan for a special meeting around the biennial, and we were never able to schedule it with a quorum. So I just wanted to raise that again um, and see if anyone has any thoughts about how to proceed. Um, we had talked about creating a formal apology letter or working on a draft of the apology letter that already exists, but we can't do that if there isn't a quorum. We have to do that in open meeting. So um, just want to gauge people's interest, availability, um, capacity, et cetera. I know Tulani and Jesse and Eamon and myself were the only members that were present during the initial cancellation. And um, maybe we need to hear from Jesse and Tulani as well, who aren't here, but just wanted to open that for discussion. Oh, and Dana, sorry, who's also not here.
you know, I think we need the three former members here that are not here to discuss this and uh, they're not in attendance, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, I can take make another attempt to send out another doodle poll to see what works for the entire council, but focusing on former members uh, who are part of the council during the biennial, which would be Eamon, Danielle, Tulani, Jesse, and Dana. Um, that's what I uh, I put forward as our plan of action regarding um, our next steps with the biennial apology. That sounds right to me, Brian. The thing that I think we could use everyone's help with, though, is outreach. So if we are going to set a time that's like a few weeks into the future, we just want to make sure that everyone who was a part of the process or wasn't a part of the process but should have been is notified of this meeting so that they can attend if they would like to and would love support in the form of sharing invitation emails to your networks once we do set up a date for this meeting, if that's okay with folks. I agree that it should be at least a month so that we can make sure that all the folks who were kind of key players can attend and have it on their calendar and can prepare. Does that sound right to folks? Um, can I just say something real quickly? I feel like I'm silent Sam over here. I wasn't a part of all of, all of that. I definitely agree with it. I just feel a little tongue tied a little bit because I don't know. I, you know, I, uh, there's some things that happen. All I can talk about is, you know, what's happening now and how wonderful and accepting uh, my experience have been here. And uh, I don't know how much that factors into what happened before. So I just want to apologize for being silent because I don't really know everything except what I saw. So, um, you know, I trust the, the board what we decide on. Thank you, Jada. Does anyone else have any comments or thoughts about what outreach could look like or any other aspects related to, to this? I have a question based on the comments, if you don't mind, if, if that's related to it, sorry guys. Uh, oh, why do I have such a hard time? Uh, in the chat room, I'm sorry. Uh, one that says, uh, Brian says, I would say at least one month in the future so we can get the outreach right. Can you tell me just a little bit what you're talking about? Is that for us to get together, to get the, a statement together, get uh, something going on so you have a month to plan it? So could you just help me with that a little bit, please? So one of the reasons that, so, so far, every time we've scheduled this meeting, we've had to cancel because we haven't had a quorum with the board. And because scheduling has been so difficult, um, we haven't been able to even find a time where we would have enough of a window to get in touch with the indigenous artists who came to that meeting and raised concern. Right. So we want to make sure that if we're having this conversation, it's something that people can really access, not that we schedule it for, you know, two days from now and nobody knows about it. And it's just us in a room making sort of like quiet decisions. So we want to make sure that we can let the artists who were involved in the biennial come. We want to make sure that we can let the folks who um, raised their concerns know. We want to let Forbes Library, the jurors, all the folks that participated it in, in it in myriad ways um, so that they can show up if they want to, right? So that's, and that's kind of a lot. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of folks to reach out to. Um, 
it's email, it's phone call, it's, you know, relationship building, sharing our plans so that folks can feel comfortable. So that's kind of what um, I think we mean by outreach, but also open to y'all's suggestions and ideas for what that could be. Maybe you have other thoughts on what that could look like. Um, I don't know. I really don't. The only thing I can think of, and it's not the same thing because you're dealing with some some uh, hurt from before that still carries on. I do know if it's not dealt with the festers and uh, I know in, in another group that I'm <clears throat> with trying to ward off some of the things that may happen there that happened in your group they got a facilitator come in to help us do all of that because of all the hurt feelings. But you're also talking about lots of people who were also a part of it, but it wasn't just one meeting. It was with this the ongoing and a lot of stuff came out, some tears and hugs and stuff. So I really felt that that was healthy. I really, I, I really can't say uh, other than, we will, you know, I think the apologies have went out, but I do think that it would be helpful if people were able to come by or express themselves, so. Did you, did you like the facilitator that you worked with? Do you think they did a good job? Yeah, she's, she's pretty good, but we went through a number of them. It was quite a process, but uh, she's still uh, with that other group that I went in. She's been doing all of that, but, um, and it had a racial thing too, but it also dealt with class and uh, gender identity and all that stuff. Cause it wasn't just one thing cause people were bracing. Well, that may happen with that incident, but what do we do about something in the future? So we made sure we got somebody who was well-versed with the umbrellas of oppression, so to speak. I can give you the information, the person's uh, info if you are interested, but it was a, it was quite a process. Other folks have thoughts on working with a facilitator? Brian writes in the chat, I think it's a good idea to work with a facilitator. I would agree, because then it means that we all can participate. Um, otherwise, like I kind of act as a facilitator a lot of the time, which isn't probably ideal <laughs> for anything, let alone something that you know I was a part of. Any other thoughts on Biennial? Um, I have some thoughts. Um, how many of the group were part of that, were part of the Arts Council at that time? What percentage of the group uh, does that represent? I'm not sure the percentage um, because my mental math at the end of the day is not going to be helpful to anyone, but it was um, me, Dana, Tulani, Jesse, and Amen. So it was five of us out of our 12, are we 12 members? Okay. Of the 12 members. Okay. So not sure. it's less than 50%. Um, Well, my difficulty is 
trying to apologize for something that I wasn't part of and uh, I'm not all that well informed about um, is perplexing. What if we issued a statement of intentions in the future that would address some of the perceived difficulties of the past without actually addressing the bian biennial itself? Just a statement of what our intention as a board, uh, many of whom are new members, um, could we draw up something like that and uh, wholeheartedly sign it? Um, I think that's something that could happen in addition to an apology and I'll share that in the original conception of the apology we really are trying to look forward and assess like whatever mistakes were made and use that to point to really concrete changes in actions and and systems with within the board mm -hmm. so there is going to be a lot of intention stating I believe or that's one thing that Eamon and I have discussed at length um so that it can have impact. Um, I would say that if it doesn't feel comfortable for the entire board to sign on to an apology and you just wanted to sign on to a statement of intention, then that's something that could be could be discussed as well. And I'll also note that, um, you know, the vote was, um, there was a majority vote for what happened, but, you know, people who are still on the committee all had different takes and stances, like, uh, in including myself. And I think one of the difficult things and also nice things about being a council is that we, we do have a collective voice. And unfortunately, like, you know, I don't think any one of us on the call is responsible for the entire system of racism that we are operating within, but I think it's a context that's worth it for us all to acknowledge. Um, but I'll, I'll leave it to each individual to decide whether they want to put their name on on an apology. If it doesn't feel right, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask you to do that. Yeah, I, I know I voted for it, but I, at that point, I, I didn't have a clue as to what it was all about. And it was just in the spirit of cooperation rather than um, understanding, you know, the whole situation. But yeah, what you what you um, have just stated is, is a good idea. So Brian also suggested in the chat convening the um, the members that were here um, to have a conversation about this separately um, and then maybe bring some suggestions back to the group and ask for help with, with outreach and communications around a meeting if there's going to be one. We had, I think we had decided that there was going to be one and we just couldn't schedule it. So. I don't want to reverse that, but um, okay. If there's nothing else on biennial, we want to open it up. Does anyone else have any new business they want to bring to the table? Uh, I would just like to say that my son and I had a really good time at first night. Um, and we saw, we got to see a lot of different performances. Uh, he's five. So he doesn't have a lot of patience to like stick around for a performance. So we ended up seeing a lot of stuff in a very short period of time, uh, culminating with fireworks at 6 p.m. Anyway, so I just wanted to say that. Um, yeah, it was a good time. Thank you, Brian, for all of your work on first night. Brian, do you want to plug for Sundays? Uh, I want to have a better plan 
Um, I don't think we're going to need a lot of volunteers this year for four Sundays because we're doing a lot of the programming at the Academy of Music. But when I have a better plan, um, we're, I'm still I'm going to wrap up for first night tomorrow, mostly. Uh, and I'll have an event report at the next uh, Arts Council meeting. And I'll probably have some more information on what kind of volunteer um, help we'll need. Uh, Garrett volunteered. He did lighting, helped to do lighting design, and he's uh, very adept at it. Uh, so we're collaborating with Signature Sounds for the Back Porch Festival. We're also going to collaborate with Self Evident Education on Power of Truth, but that's going to be later, probably in April. But um, those are two things that are probably going to need a lot of volunteers for. Um, Besides that, we're doing the Silver Chord Bowl. We're doing a kind of like an old style uh, film at the Academy uh, around St. Patrick's Day. We're going to do the original film of like Ernest Shackleton's um, Endurance. Um, but that's it's going to have a live orchestra to playing the soundtrack. So that's going to be really interesting. Uh, but we'll no, I don't think I'll need any volunteers for that or the Silver Chord Bowl. Uh, I'm, I have a meeting with um, NEPM around the Silver Cord Bowl. I don't know what they want. I think they might be interested in in televising it and or, you know, doing some kind of press thing with the Silver Cord Bowl, which is really interesting. But I'll I'll figure that out uh, in February when my meeting happens. Um, that's about it right now. Everything else that we were planning in the fall for for Sundays, we haven't really had. It's not really solid yet, but that's about it for that. Um, I'll talk about first night at the next meeting, so I'll have more solid ideas of the success of it. But it was a wonderful night. Saw a lot of people I haven't seen in a long time, which was lovely. And uh, everybody seemed to be in a really good mood, even though it was raining. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Um, I shared two items in the chat. The oh. first is, a, oh, go ahead, Jada. Sorry, it was about the first night. If I could just comment, I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to say um, <clears throat> I had other duties, so I'm sorry I couldn't make my commitment, but I had a little sick doggy. But I was at a meeting in another group that I was with also, the Survivor Center, and I had mentioned to some of the women, it's mainly clients, if they had uh, buttons. And I guess did you graciously give some to the survivor center because at that point the one of the uh not directors but some uh said we have some here so they were because i only had like one or two but they provided a lot and people were so excited about that so anyway i just want to thank uh the agency for the consideration of really trying to make that something that everybody can go and enjoy so everybody enjoyed it but me because i couldn't go so thank you Thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. Having my internet connections all messed up. Hello, hopefully we come back. We hear you. All right, sorry, I'm, everybody's frozen for me. When it catches up, I'll talk more or speak more. All right. All right. <laughs> Did I just solidly freeze there? No, no. you were coming oh. in. You're okay. good. I'm good. I can. Everybody was frozen for me. So I think I thought it was a reciprocation of that. Uh, yeah, we do a lot of outreach to donate directly to a lot of. Um, organizations in town. So I think we donate, I think I donate over 500, 600 buttons this year. Um, and then we implemented card to culture this year as well. Um, and I just wanted to, to thank as well, Kay and her partner were super helpful. Uh, and it was really nice to meet them in person and spend some time with them, even though it was hectic. 
because we were at the main box office headquarters and Jesse and their partner also came and it was awesome and they were there in the morning. So I had a lot of support and I really appreciate the board members who come out and and help out. Yeah, it was so. a good time. Brian was very patient in answering the million questions that we had as soon as we showed up. So yeah, it was uh, definitely do it again next year. Um, so, you know, the biennial uh, is always a difficult thing to talk about and plan around um, because uh, as we all know that a large portion of the current membership uh, were not part of the council at the time, and it's been difficult to collab like get together and and move this forward. So, um, I think I'll meet with Danielle and you know go over what we talked about in the meeting and see how we should move forward. Is there any other new business anybody wants to talk about? I wanted to share some invitations. I've dropped them in the chat. The first is a poster for an event that the Arts Council actually funded. Um, it's the community premiere of Finding the Words, the documentary about folks from Voices from Inside. So the poster's done. Nax logo is right in center and would really appreciate it if y'all could help spread the word. As you know, tickets are free and the QR code on the poster um, brings folks directly to the page on the Academy site where you can reserve a free ticket. And it should be a really special night. And the other event I wanted to let people know about just in case it isn't on your radar yet is um, a comedy show called Comedy Cause. It is a benefit comedy show at the Academy featuring Hank Denson, who is um, a pretty well-known comic. He's been on The Chappelle Show and open for a lot of famous people. And he's best known for his hashtag pay teachers more. Um, and the benefit this year, all of the funds that are raised from this show will go to support the Literacy Project, which is a really awesome organization based in Greenfield that does um, adult literacy classes and helps folks, you know, attain basic literacy and go all the way up to get their GED and apply to college programs in um, Amherst, Northampton, Greenfield, and um, I think other some other folks, some other places in Franklin and Hampshire County. So it would be lovely to see you both Saturdays in a row for these awesome community events. And again, if you could help spread the word, I would be very, very grateful. Um, so yeah, that's all the new business I have. I'll open it Does any, if anyone else wants to chime in. All right, well, if there's no other new business, would anyone like to move to close the meeting? We are making up time for all of our many, many, many extended meetings that we've had in the in the fall. I'll move that we close the meeting. I'll second. And those in favor? Great. Well, thank you all for being here tonight and um, look forward to seeing you at our next meeting and hopefully at some of these great events before then. Everybody, thank Take you. Bye-bye.